Hi and welcome to this month's tips and tricks video. My name is Dave Hiddeman. I'm the application specialist for the steel segment here at Trimble. And uh, this month we're going to be talking a little bit more about custom component variables. Um, specifically I want to touch on some of the different value types um, that we can use and also I want to do a simple if-then statement in our formula. So first off, I did mention about these uh, parameter value types very briefly in the last video that when you're setting up a formula you want to make sure you're choosing from the right value type. Now some of these are going to be pretty self-explanatory like profile or material grade um, but I want to show you one, um, this yes no option and a, a possibility of what you can do with this. So first off, yes no is basically a binary option. One for yes, zero for no. Um, so if you come in here and set one, um, you're going to get a yes. If you said zero, you're going to get a no. Okay. So um, when you have this yes no option, what you're going to get in the dialog box is a toggle. Uh, a drop down saying yes or no. Um, so what we can do with this is tie this to different functions and the one that I most often use this on is for including parts. So if I wanted to have a, a piece that I could turn on or turn off in a component this is a great option for that. So maybe for example I want to take these uh, the bolts and the top plate and have the option to turn those on and off. Well, I mentioned in the last video how you can click on an object and see it here in the browser. And if I expand the general properties, one of those options is called creation. And if I tie this creation to the new uh, variable that I just added, this P4, um, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for my bolts. Uh, this is going to give me the ability to enable or disable these things um, as needed. So I'll add it for this last bolt group add an equation and say equals P4. We will close and save the component and then we'll go ahead and test this in our model. So now I've got an example of this component inserted. If I double click on it, parameter 4, yes. If I change this to no, those parts then disappear. So this is just you know going to add a lot of flexibility to have a component that can do many different things where you can turn on and off um, objects if you you know want to have that functionality. Another thing I want to touch on with these variable types um, is when you're doing certain types, they actually work in pairs. Now, a, a great example of that is controlling your bolts. So if I come in here to my value type and I choose bolts or bolt um, settings like size or standard, these actually work together there are only certain sizes available in certain grades so you have to be able to choose both in order to get a, a proper bolt size chosen so I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna choose a bolt standard as a value type and then I'm gonna choose a bolt size standard meaning grade size meaning size or diameter as you can see by changing the value type it's gone ahead and added some content it's added a postfix to the name and um, it's actually doing that to define that these are bolt related uh, variables but it also gives me the opportunity to pair these variables together and the way I do that is by setting a matching prefix in the name so right now it says p5 underscore screwed in and p6 underscore diameter if I tried to use these as is Tecla wouldn't be able to know that these are supposed to work together so what you want to do for variables like this is change the prefix to match p5 or whatever prefix screwed in and p5 matching prefix diameter you're gonna find there's a couple of different variables that do this components are another great example if you want to set a component and then a component attribute file you'll see how it changes the name uh, for those uh, particular uh, value types. So I'm going to set this up to be an A325N bolt. Uh, I'm going to set this up to be a 3 quarter inch diameter. And um, let's go ahead and, and test this by linking this to, say, the web bolts here. So I'm going to grab this group of web bolts, and we're going to go to our general properties. We're going to assign the bolt standard to be um, the p 5 underscore screwed in and we're gonna set the size to the p5 underscore uh, diameter so if I then close and save out of this 
and again go to my component in the model. Now I'm going to have drop downs for the available diameters for the bolt grades. And as you can see, it's actually bringing up a list of the bolt grades that are available in my environment. So if I wanted to change this to be, say, an A325NTC, because I don't want the hex head, and I want these to be a one inch diameter, when I modify, we're going to get the TC bolts in the larger diameter. Okay, So there are several of those attributes, and you'll see them uh, when you change that name, that do get paired together like this. Okay, The last thing I want to show you in this uh, particular video is creating an if-then statement formula. Um, we talked a little bit about formulas, how you can simply add an equal sign and then call in some type of value, or teach it to reference another type of value. So let's go in here and let's actually create an if-then statement. Now, an if-then statement is when you have something that happens, you, you want it to do something else. So if, for example, I just said a bolt diameter, if a certain bolt diameter is 3 quarters of an inch, I want it to do one thing. However, if it's larger than 3 quarters of an inch, maybe I want it to do something else. So in this example, what I'll do is I will change the plate thickness. So the plate thickness is currently, uh, let's see here, this is currently a 3 8 inch plate. So let's say that I want to have a 3 8 inch plate when it's a 3 quarter inch bolt, but anything over a 3 quarter inch bolt, I want it to go ahead and jump up to a half inch plate. Okay? So let's go ahead and make some adjustments here. So um, first off, I'm going to set a plate thickness. Now I like to do this um, you know, just so I can see how things are going. I, I could do something like this where I, I, in my last video, I kind of built a profile name. Uh, I'm going to keep it kind of simple for this example, though. So let's go ahead and add in two variables. I'm going to make them both profile variables. In this case, I'm going to make it a plate 3 8 And uh, in the next case, I'll make it a plate 1 half. Okay? So now I'm going to add an if-then statement in here where I'm going to say equals. Remember, that's what I need to start any formula with. If... Uh, the P5 diameter is greater than 3 quarter, then I want it to use the thicker plate, P7. Else, if it's not greater than 3 quarter, I want it to use P6, and if. So this is your standard if-then statement. It's got the if, you have uh, something to check, then, what do you want it to use? Else, what do you want it to use, or otherwise? And then you have to close the statement with an end if, all one word. And it is case sensitive, you want to keep that lowercase. Okay? Now, uh, one thing I, I am not sure about, just typing this in, is whether or not it's going to read the three quarter like that, because a lot of functions in Tecla are reading or thinking uh, metric under the hood. So let's go ahead and hit enter here. And I can see that um, it hasn't changed from plate one half, so it's not quite reading that correctly. So let's let's try something here. I'm going to make a uh, use a function, a unit conversion function called Imperial, and um, let's go ahead and make this decimal just so I can be sure. So I'm going to say Imperial 0.75 or three quarters of an inch, and see if we get a better result here. So right away I can see that that now change to plate 3 8 So what if we bump this up to a 1 inch bolt? I'm going to keep an eye on this down here when I hit enter. It did. It went ahead and changed to a 1 half. So let me go ahead and change this back again to 3 quarters and we can see that that plate that did react. So I'll do one last thing. I'm going to tie that setting to the properties here of that particular plate. So we'll call in P8 and then let's see, um, let's go ahead and hide that. I don't actually need to see that, so we're going to hide that. So let's go ahead and close this and test it in our model. So, open up my component. My current diameter, I should have labeled these, my current diameter here is going to be um, a one inch bolt. So let's change this to a three quarter inch bolt and let's see if that plate is actually changing size. Let's change that back to a one inch bolt. Yep, looks like that plate is changing size. So let me undo, redo here. We can actually see that take effect as the bolt diameter changes. 
So there's an example of an if-then statement, and you know if-then statements can get pretty complicated, um, depending on what you're trying to do comparisons between. But that's your basic structure, and as I mentioned in the last video, these formulas once you're used to building them and once you're familiar with the syntax of them, you can use these same formulas inside of uh, reports if you're using the template editor. So when you become uh, proficient at one, you kind of become proficient at both. So um, I hope you find these little tips helpful. As always, uh, if you have any comments or suggestions uh, for future videos, go ahead and leave them below. Um, and thank you for watching.